voice control of all these incredibly clever smart home gadgets is all very well and good, but sometimes you just want a button. That's right, a physical button, something you can press and have the light come on. Amazing, I know. This is the Flick 2, a button which controls not just your smart home devices, but also integrates with a ton of your favorite online services like Spotify, Slack, Zapier, and IFTTT. It's a button for anything, literally anything. If you can dream of it, this button can probably connect to it and make it do something. And it's not just a single button press for a single action either. You can chain together multiple actions under one single button press. You can also have a double tap and a hold action assigned. I'm James Bruce. Join me as I take a closer look at the Flick 2 Starter Kit. So now in its second iteration, the Flick 2 Starter Kit comes with a diminutive little hub as well as three little buttons. And of course, you can purchase more buttons to extend your system. And there's also some optional components like an infrared connector, which enables your hub to control infrared devices, as well as those which have a, an API or web connected service. We're just taking a look at the basic kit though, which is the hub and three buttons. From the simple packaging to the simple product design, everything about the Flick 2 is incredibly simple to use and simple to set up. Out of the box, just plug the hub into your router via the Ethernet cable and then power it through a USB adapter. Now, although a USB cable is included in the package, neither a charger nor an Ethernet cable is actually included. Now, normally for a smart home beginner's kit sort of thing, I would castigate shortcut labs for this. However, given the fact that you're probably only gonna be buying the Flick 2 starter kit if you have a lot of smart home devices already, which you want to automate and add buttons to, I think it's forgivable to not include that Ethernet cable and USB hub. It's more than likely that you have one sitting around in a drawer somewhere, so that's a little bit less e-waste for the world to deal with. Once plugged in, you do need to perform initial setup using the Flick app on your mobile device. There is software available for the desktop, but the initial setup has to be done on your mobile device. Just open it up, click on Add Hub, it'll automatically find it on the network. It's all really simple. And from there, you can add each of the buttons by just saying, add a Flick button, hold it down until it recognizes it, and then it's added. Again, very simple to set up. From there, you can then go on to assign what the button presses actually do. And that's where things get a whole lot more complicated and tedious, as you have to remember the sign-in details that you used for all your multitude of different smart home accounts. So the Flick 2 buttons use an enhanced long-range Bluetooth 5 connection to the hub. Uh, as opposed to having Wi-Fi built into them, and that's to conserve battery power. However, unlike some smart home devices, you don't actually need an app in order to use them. You will for that initial setup, but after that, the software doesn't need to run on your desktop or your phone. You can just keep using them. You'll press it, the Bluetooth connection will go to this, and then this hub contains uh, all the functions that you need to make it work. So for range testing of this long range Bluetooth 5 connection, uh, I placed this hub in my office work area along with all the other sort of smart home hubs that I have like the Philips Hue and uh, Samsung SmartThings hub. And at this point, I should say that I live in quite a weird house because it's built onto a hill and about 150 years old. It's actually kind of long and not the sort of cube shape that you would expect uh, in most modern houses. Some of the walls are a meter thick in places and I have trouble even getting a Wi-Fi signal from uh, one end of the house to the other or into certain rooms. Uh, and so I wasn't really expecting miracles from the Flick 2 buttons either, even though they're marketed as being long range Bluetooth. Uh, and sure enough, placing this in the office at one end of the house, uh, the signal didn't quite reach the other end. And that's to be expected, really. Most people shouldn't have a problem with this, and it's certainly longer range than most Bluetooth devices normally are. Uh, however, it still wasn't quite enough for my entire house. Now, I could probably have improved the location by placing it in the middle of the house. However, that would have required a good bit of extra wiring to make it convenient, because of course it needs 
power and an ethernet cable. It's not too much trouble to run an ethernet cable, but it is to try and find a spare power socket in the roof, for instance. So, so that brings me on to my first minor complaint, really. It would have been nice if the hub could have been powered over the ethernet connection. A PoE is a thing, power over ethernet. So if you have a switch that's equipped for that, you could theoretically run both to a small device like this, which doesn't really need a lot of power, and that would have immensely improved placement and range. But as it is, you need a separate USB uh, power charger and the ethernet cable, so that will really limit uh, where you can place this, I think. Again, for most people, this probably isn't gonna be a problem, but if you know that you have range issues in your house, uh, with Wi-Fi at the moment and with Bluetooth, then this may not work as well for you. So what can you actually do with the Flick 2? Well, in terms of directly supported hardware, I found the list was a little bit limited, but it's also highly extensible through the use of third-party web services. Lighting is well supported with Nanoleaf, Philips Hue, IKEA TradFi, LiFX, uh, all supported directly, uh, natively through their APIs. Other smart home systems are not as well supported. Wemo and Wink is in the list, but Samsung SmartThings, which most of my smart home is based on, uh, isn't supported. On the entertainment side, you have VLC, Chromecast, Spotify, and Sonos. But even if they do have uh, direct support through the app, it, precisely what you can do will depend very much on what's been implemented from the API or if the API even offered that in the first place. So for instance, I wanted to set it up to play a specific song from Spotify directly to my Sonos speakers when I press the button. Now, although Spotify is supported, uh, the API doesn't actually report all of the speakers in my house. It was only listing um, Alexa and any currently running computers with the app running. So then I tried the Sonos action and unfortunately it's a little bit limited there. You can only sort of change the volume, uh, play or stop. So I couldn't get it to play directly from Spotify through the Sonos action either. When I reached out to support, they suggested using IFTTT as a intermediary. And sure enough, that did the trick. The IFTTT Sonos skill does allow you to play any song that's been set on your favorites. So first I had to use the Sonos app to find the song on Spotify, add it to my Sonos favorites, then go through IFTTT, telling it that when the button was pressed, I would like a specific thing from my favorites played to the Sonos speakers, and it works like that. It's a bit of a hacky workaround, but it does work. And you're going to find this is the case with a lot of the integrations. It does work, but there's an inherent delay, of course, when you're sending a signal out to the internet and waiting for it to come back. So it's not quite as good as a uh, direct API connection. Power users, however, will really appreciate the fact that as well as IFTTT and Zapier, you can also do a generic HTTP request uh, with different types of headers and different payloads available that you can plug in to get it to do pretty much anything. As long as it's got a web API, you can probably program it into this. So that's very cool. It is extensible and you can make it work, but it, it will require a little bit of effort. So now I can just press this button and have everything is awesome played to every Sonos speaker in the house, which is, I think, very useful. Now I mentioned that you could chain together multiple actions. So of course, as well as just playing a specific song on a single or set of speakers, you could also have it dim the main room lights, turn on the party lights, and then send a message out to your Slack colleagues saying it's party time, because why not? So should you buy the Flick 2 starter kit? If you're bored of constantly shouting at Alexa to turn the lights on, and really just long for the days of having a physical switch that you could press and have it do that and more, then absolutely. It can also be set up to message your colleagues on Slack and tell them you're taking a coffee break. It can turn on your coffee machine as well if you have a web connected coffee machine. Don't we all? It can pull down the projector and it can lock your front door. It can do all of these things and more. It's very extensible, very hackable with those generic HTTP requests. You can make it do anything you want if it's web connected. But yes, I do realize the irony of replacing all your light bulbs with smart bulbs that can then no longer be controlled from the light switch and instead having to go to the expense of buying smart switches just so you can control your lights with a physical switch again. 
In my experience, the buttons themselves were very reliable, but precisely what you can get them to do is going to very much depend on the individual API and service that you're connecting it to. Some things will work better than others, and that's really the problem with the whole smart home ecosystem in general, rather than a failing of the flick buttons themselves. The more complexity you add into the system, the easier it will be for things to fail. And with the flick buttons integrating so many different devices and web services, that's as true here as it will be for any bit of smart home kit. Anyway, thanks to Shortcut Labs, we have another one of these superb long range starter kits to give away, including a hub and three of these little flick buttons for one lucky viewer. To be in with a chance of winning, just head on over to the full review linked in the description and at the bottom of that you'll find a giveaway widget. Pop your details in there and you'll be in with a chance of winning. For some bonus entries be sure to tell us what you would use the flick to buttons to automate and why. Also be sure to add competitions at makeusoft.com to your address book so that when I email you the message doesn't go into spam. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.